hey yo where are all the dragon ball fine games like seriously like i've been asking myself this question because growing up dragon ball fine games were everywhere but right now they've just feel non-existent i honestly don't know where they went they just upped and vanished one day so today we're just going to be talking about some dragon ball fine games that i've experienced through videos when i was growing up or that i've actually played so first off we got esf aka earth special forces now ESF isn't really a traditional fine game, ESF is actually on board for Half-Life. Just by looking at the game, you can tell it's ancient. I mean, it came out more than 20 years ago. But it still gives off that early 2000s vibe you'd get from any fine made Dragon Ball media at the time. Just by looking at the game footage, you can tell that a lot of the game is rough and is really held back by the fact that it's a mod. However, the game is still being updated and it's looking better by the day. Unfortunately though, with how little info we get, Half-Life being pretty much dead, the fact that Vine has changed dramatically, and the audience in general has moved on, ESF feels almost forgotten. What I will say is, if you did grow up playing this game, I definitely believe that you did make fun memories. Moving on from ESF, we got a personal favorite of mine. But before that, I have a question. Do you know what Beyond is? For those who don't know, Beyond is a game engine of sorts that allows people to make games. And when I say games, I mean that very loosely. What you can do with Beyond is extremely limited, but the trade-off is that it's extremely easy to use. It also has the benefit of being able to play the games you created online. Beyond was created in the early 2000s and wasn't very well known. However, it gained its own following. And eventually, a few anime fans found out and started making anime games using the Beyond engine. Now here's the thing. Beyond games, graphically and gameplay wise, leave a lot to be desired. But lord knows that growing up with these games made you appreciate how dedicated the creators for these games were to making them enjoyable regardless. Beyond games don't hold up to this day, but it definitely did its job back then. Here's where we get to Dragon Ball Z Heroes United. I loved this game growing up. It was basically my first time playing an MMORPG in a way. The story mode of the game was just fighting against the villains of the anime in order as they appeared in. But that wasn't where the fun lied. The fun was in everything else. Like I said before, Beyond allowed multiplayer. What that means is it wasn't just you. You had people flying around the map fighting different characters and even other players. And not only that, but the maps were as big as they could have gotten with how limited Beyond was. It even allowed you to travel to different planets. There were also events such as tournaments and capture the flight and with the community of players you can make friends and even create your own fun from there. The game was so good that the creator even made a second game. The game itself was more polished or at least as polished as they could make it with the engine. However the second game lacked something that the first didn't and I personally feel like the first game was more memorable. However as time passed, fine games using better engines started surfacing and Heroes United 1 and 2 stopped receiving updates. Both games just eventually died. Beyond was already small, so it was kinda inevitable. But yeah, let's talk about something more recent. How much of you know about Hybrid DBZ? Now I'm sure a lot of you who are in the DBZ game and seen heard of this game. Hybrid DBZ is a proper fun made fighting game using the Mugen engine. It uses the classic 6 button layout that you would see in Street Fighter, a brand new spice creator from the dev team themselves. Nothing reused. Now this game is absolutely beautiful and extremely fun. There isn't much else about the game I can really talk about outside of how good the game feels. Unfortunately we haven't heard or seen info on this game in a while. After looking back at a few of these fan made games, it's clear as day that these games are passion projects and the people involved love what they do. Many of them don't care how long it takes to complete the game. With that being said, there's one more game I want to talk about that actually isn't fan made but an actual official game and the reason why is because I want to show you how dedicated Dragon Ball fans are. How many of you heard of Dragon Ball Online? Dragon Ball Online was the first official Dragon Ball MMORPG that was released in 2010 and Dragon Ball Online is responsible for a lot of concepts and characters that exist in modern Dragon Ball media today, especially for Xenoverse. Listen, the Time Patrol debuted in this game, Toa and Mira debuted in this game, heck even in recent years, Dragon Ball Online had Cell X, which almost seems like where Cell Mask got a lot of its inspiration from. Unfortunately, the game was shut down in 2013. However, fans were so dedicated 
that they somehow found a way to build the game from the ground up and host new servers for the game for everyone to play in 2022. That's insane. Despite the game being down for almost a decade, they found a way to play the game again. Let me reiterate that. Dragon Ball fans took an official game that got a server shut down and found a way to bring it back themselves through sheer dedication almost a decade later. Hey listen, you gotta give credit where credit's due. Dragon Ball fans love the series despite the amount of complaint they do online. They do whatever it takes to create immersive or creative games. And when they aren't doing that, they're finding ways to revive something that we thought was lost forever. But it makes me wonder, are fan games so scarce because many people want to make big ambitious projects? Or do they get taken down too quickly? I'm not entirely sure because communities such as Pokemon still release thousands of fan games despite the harsh treatment they get from Nintendo. So that brings up another question that I have. Does the Dragon Ball Z community not want their hard work to go to waste by a company like Toei taking it down? Or is there something else that's holding them back from creating more games? Let me know what you guys think. And also, let me know what Dragon Ball Z games you've played or came across that weren't mentioned in this video. Lord knows I struggle to find any. With that being said, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.